So today, looking at a follow-up from the FX and, and index lazy trading system, uh, I'll touch on it quickly. Uh, I just want to check. Yep, 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 yep. Boom. Okay, everyone's got me in audio. Um, so let's quickly just to remind the folks of how it works. Uh, it is a very, very simple system. That is its purpose. We're using 15 and 30 to give us 30 and 60 rather for direction, 15 for trigger. So there's it visually, your 30 is above your 60, price goes up through 15, next candle, if it closes up, is your confirmation candle. So that's broadly the system. Um, the first video is on the Just One Lap, wrong part, is on the Just One Lap uh, platform. If you go to justonelap.com slash masterclass, you'll find the first video which goes into the detail around the system. This really is going to be looking at, at trading it. And I've, in the IG platform, but I've gone offshore because in the, in the Zara platform, there's only top 40 to trade um, and it's been a beast. So this is my, my FTSE 100 that we're looking at. We'll look at some indices. We'll look at some currencies as well. As I said, it doesn't work on um, equi on equities. And we can never look at commodities. I've, I've never tried it on commodities. Uh, but first point is let's set it up. So it's exponential moving averages that we want. Uh, the first is 15. Then we want a 30. And then we want a 60. Um, I would prefer brighter colors but i don't have control over that so we'll live with that we'll take the atr off we don't need that so this is my footsie it's a daily chart so, so certainly we can trade it in a daily chart um the footsie hasn't it, it hasn't been doing much at all uh where are we here we would have got ourselves a buy signal uh, 30 is above 60. It goes up through 15. Remember, we then enter on the following candle. Um, and if you're in a, in a daily chart, you can make 15 or 30 your exit. If I drop to weekly, and I'll show you now why I'm looking at weekly, it's because we've just got a weekly signal this last weekend. So what we need is for this uh, index to close green on Friday, and then we will have the trade and it will be confirmed. You can see that point there. Uh, we got a trigger, it went up, but then it failed down, back up through, which was last week's Friday, and then off it goes. I trade this just using ETFs. Um, you can sign up to it at uh, justonelap.com slash uh, trading sub. Um, but I need my close there on Friday to be higher than the close from the previous Friday, and then I will enter. But let's go down to an hourly chart. Let's check that up. Um, Gunter, I trade that only in ETF because it's a weekly chart. So those trades, I mean, I've set in trades there that have run for years. Um, but as soon as I drop my time frames, then I drop to all Z or whatever the case may be. Uh, I trade the futures. But certainly in, in, in I, I trade the, the weekly in a, in, a, in an ETF space. Because as I said, I mean, I've been in trades that have literally run for, 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 I think the longest was about three years. And you pay a lot of interest. I mean, sure, it made me, I don't know, 120, 140%, but uh, nonetheless. So in an hourly chart, we're sitting here. Now, I'm picking and choosing. So there's a trigger, right? It goes, let's first check. My 30 is above 60. We go up through the 15. So that's nice and good, but we don't get the confirming candle. The next candle has to be green. So there's my next entry where we'd gone back below the 15, we go back up again, we get the confirmation. So we would have gone long at around 790, which was the close of the candle. Um, and my stop would be there, which would have been a seven o'clock in the morning stop, getting me out at around 906. Uh, so about 106 points on the FTSE. That's, that's a nice move in, a, in an hourly chart. Uh, remembering that the FTSE is, and I need to go and check this because now I, I don't remember what the FTSE is. Um, I think FTSE is 10 pounds a point. Yeah, 10 pounds a point per index point. So 100 odd points, yeah, is, yeah for the, there are many uh, contracts. I think there's a two pound a point contract as well. Um, and and then those sort of trades like this, which we see here on the FTSE, which which did drift down, and we can see that this is seven December, which was was Wednesday, but it's drifting into their nighttime market. Um, so you didn't get out at the high, but those sort of trades, 
100 points on the FTSE, equivalent to four 500 points on the Aussie because of the, the, the pointing difference. In fact, six or 700 equivalent on, on, on the Aussie. Um, are those chunky trades, and they're the ones that make the difference because you get a lot of of less thrilling. Uh, where's my so somewhere in this mess here? I'm getting buys, and I know these are happening at in the middle of the night, so we ignore those. Um, so there's another buy there, which happened realistically at 9:46, and then stopped you at. Uh, 963 so you know 18 points whereas at one point here you had been up quite chunky uh, at, at, at uh, over over a hundred points um, and then the 30 and the 60 switch so now we're looking for shorts didn't happen now we're looking for longs over here at this point <coughs> excuse me uh, not happening either um, but you're gonna get the occasional trade like this that delivers a giant amount of, 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 of chunky profit for you. And then you're going to get a lot of small profits, small losses, uh, gets messy. And then the big one comes along again uh, and makes it all work for you. Uh, it'll work on Wall Street. I mean, pretty much it, it, it likes indices. It likes FX. Um, uh, we're not. Whoa! There is there's a, a trigger there on Wall Street from this morning, but not coming through because Wall Street's currently closed for this point in time. So that's not much of a muchness. You will also get runs that happen that you just don't catch on to. Uh, for example, did we catch this run? So did we get a close below the 15? Yes, we did. Um, so there you would have got a entry at about 261. And you would have got stopped up there uh, at about 760. So about 500 points um, on, on Wall Street there, the equivalent of, of the Dow Jones. As I said, these are not your, you know, are, are, are the, the nice outlier trades which, which make all the difference. After this, we can see, and then it gets messy because I'm zoomed out. Uh, there, did we trigger? Yes. Did it confirm? Yes, it did. And then almost immediately stop us out. Small loss. So at that point, we're long at about uh, 786, and we are stopped at about 768. So 18 points down. I'm using the 15 as my 15 EMA as my stop loss. Uh, it's nice. It's easy. It's programmable. I want to close below it for that to trigger my stop, um, and that is, is is my focus. Are there clever ways of doing stop losses? Probably. Um, question coming through. Are there more trades coming through here? Yeah, there is. There's there. And then I think we get a trade there. Uh, seven, nine, six. And we would have got stopped at that point. Uh, eight, eight, seven. So 90 points odd made on that trade there. You are holding, although what time did that happen? Yeah, look, at 10 o'clock. I don't know. You it depend. It, 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 no, hold on. The entry was that one. One o'clock in the morning, unless you programmed it, you probably didn't catch that trade because one o'clock in the morning, guys. Um, I used the 15 EMA as, as, as my exit. Uh, let's look at some, some metals. So I've never really done this on metals before. Um, partly just not had the capacity to. And I don't know, it would require, we'll have a quick squiz now, but in truth, it's going to require a, a, a lot more digging. Yep, so my EMAs are correct. It's going to have to, it's going to require a lot more digging. But there is a short on gold um, because your 30 is below your 60. You close below the 15 on that candle. The next candle, which is the 11 o'clock candle, confirms. So you short at 64 and then you're stopped at 59. So you made $5, which is not thrilling considering at one point there, you were $13 in the money. Um, another short there, which almost immediately, which confirmed at the close of 56 and then has stopped you out. Uh, and at this point, a potential long coming up if this candle that we're currently in can close green. So, uh, would the, the the reason why indices and um, FX work is because they're so significantly less volatile than uh, than 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 
your equities. Equities are very, very volatile. Spot silver, 5,000 ounces of silver. That's a truckload of silver. Still sitting in my hourly chart. Hourly is my preferred chart. Always is going to be, oh, that's just a messy chart. So you get a buy, it doesn't confirm. You get a buy, it does confirm, stops you out. Um, I'm going to go, we'll look at different time frames. But in, on the intraday space, my preferred is, is, is the hourly. I want to look for energies, oil. Uh, I don't know which one is the better to trade, but I'm going to trade Brent crude because that's the one that I know best. Uh, so there comes Brent crude. So that giant uh, gap up yes last week. Uh, you, in fact, did you miss it? I think you might have actually missed it, and that, that's what I'm trying to see. So, so this is just a, a, a sort of a first step at eyeballing. So your 30 is above your 60. Your price was below. So that actually would have been your in there at 2 o'clock on the 9th uh, at 54.43, and then you would have got stopped at that point at 56. So you would have made uh, $2.13 which might not sound like a truckload, um, but what is oil a point? Ah, not news. The info. Uh, point is $10. Yeah, so you made some money there. Nice, but yes. Um, commodities, I worry, are actually quite volatile, and it's that lack of volatility that really is um, so very, very critical. <clears throat> if you've got something too volatile, you just get absolutely thrown away. FX, remember, always trade the majors. Don't even be slightly interested in touching the, the minors. Majors are USD, uh, Euro, sorry, USD, uh, uh, yeah, USD, uh, American dollar, Euro, uh, cable, which is sterling, and then yen. I see that they include um, Australian dollar as well, Swiss franc. Uh, thanks, guys, but no thanks. So there's Euro USD, probably the best one to trade. It's the most traded currency in the world. Um, and in currency, I actually prefer a four hour chart, but let's have a look. So this is my one hour, my 15, my 30, my 60. Now, there you've got to break up. And your 30 is below your 60, so it did not. Is my 30 really below my 60? Yep, so it did not confirm because uh, that's not my 15. There you've got another one. Now we're basically just going sideways. Where are we? Uh, 30 is below 60, so at this point still looking for shorts. Where are we there? Uh, 30 is now above 60. We're above the 15. So we're looking for buy if, if that candle there, so which will be 2 o'clock ZAR time, uh, confirms. Uh, someone's saying, did we short that candle over there? Um, so 30 is above 60, so no, it didn't trigger. So this is messy and not helping at all. Four hour. There's my preferred time frame. Let's see if we're getting anything better in this. So on that one there, 30 is above 60. So 30 above 60, I want long trades only. And when we got that break there, uh, 30 was below 60. So we missed the break to the upside. We missed the break to the downside. And basically, we've been watching. At that point there, my 30 is below 60, so that's not triggering. So it's 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 tr it's triggering in the one hour, but it's waiting for the for the uh, uh, four hour. Uh, Roger, absolutely. Uh, Federal Open Monetary Policy uh, Open Monetary Committee meeting this evening. I think eight o'clock is our time. So markets really are going to be moving into into let's not do very much. So let's go and find a more non. Uh, pound euro. There's an, a, 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 a one with a difference, but we're probably still going to see. I should have thought about that before I, I scheduled this 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 webcast. But uh, and then that's coming through. So where are we at that point? Uh, Thirty is above and fifteen. So we're looking for a entry point. Um, that I think was not because th uh, thirty was above. Um, so that was a trigger that confirmed. So you would have taken a position uh, at 86, uh, 1.86, um, and your stop would have been 
at one nine one from one eight six. So you you made a bit. You made fifty fifty pips. Nice. It's, and it's it, you know your pips are. I don't know what my currency is here, um, but you certainly made something there. That's in the four hour, which, as I say, is my preferred time frame um, for the the. The, the currencies and here we're just getting noise and noise is terrible well, terrible ish so 30 above 60 breaks so at that point you go long at around 187 uh, and you got yourself stopped a little while later so 187 at nine o'clock on the ninth uh, stopped yep uh, at two o'clock in the morning on the 12th and you can set that into the stop loss easy enough uh, 187 you made 191 <clears throat> One eight seven zero one nine one zero. So you've made forty uh, pips in that space there. Um, someone asking what are my pips worth, and I don't know. So let's go check what my pips are worth. Ugh. If I don't click on news, I'm always doing something wrong. Info. Uh, Ten euro, so that would have been a four hundred euro profit in, in in that space there. I want to go back to the indices. I want to look at some different time frames there as well. Um, stock indices, uh, FTSE. You'll note the different contracts here, but we'll go to the cash one, which is the default for IG. Uh, link not working, and that might be because I got the link wrong. Just one lap.com slash trading sub to sign up. We, we've been in beta for six months on this. We're going to launch the real deal in the new year. There will be a fee, but there will be a 90-day a uh, uh, trial period. But uh, just one lap.com slash trading, trading subs. So here's my one-hour chart. We can we, we can drop it to anywhere. I mean, the, the point of the time frame is, is don't go hunting through time frames. Say to yourself, I trade this system in this time frame. This is how I do it. Nice, simple, keep it clean. Um, if I pull it a bit there, so that this giant move that we saw here, I mean, the system just caught it. You know, almost without fail in whatever time frame you were in, the system was catching that 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 very very giant move there. Let's go way back and let's just go pick a random point in time and have a look at that sorry the system's now going crazy as it tries to download uh <laughs> eight months of 15 minute data um i should have been a little more clever about that i'm going to shut it Oh, no, really? Is it going to want to load up my eight months of, of – ah, there we go. So let me drop it to daily. And then we can take it back in time to a random point in the year. And then we can drop it to our 15-minute <clears throat> Ah, oh, no, sorry, it did just exactly the same again. So we're going to have to just do this. So we've gone back to the end of August, just a random point in time at the end of August to pull up a 15-minute chart. Um, so, so, I mean, we, we can just eyeball them. I, if, I, I, can, I can zoom in a smidgen more. Okay, so we, there was a trade on the left there, but we lost it. Even just eyeballing. So there, have you got uh, 30 below 60? No, we, yes, we have. Uh, and triggers on the 15 coming below. So next candle is your short at uh, 6808. And your stop is there at uh, 6779. So you made 30 points on that. Um, not a big move, but remember we're looking at a FTSE here, which is a 6,800 index, um, whereas the top is a 44,000 index. And we would, you know, so basically that it's a, you know, the comparison would be around six times more. Um, and we're trading 10 pounds a point here. Um, there looks like a really, really nice short coming through. So we gapped up, we came back down. Uh, we are 30 is below 60, price below 15, next candle confirmed, 
short at 785 uh, and then a horrible stop really horrible stop at 761 so we made 24 points there why do i say a horrible stop two reasons we missed that really really nice low down there at um 721 uh and and look if we look at that candle there look how far it went through the uh stop loss before we triggered it i trigger on close um, now, you can get a lot more aggressive with it, and there's something to be said, particularly if you're going to go into the short time frames. If you're going to be running short time frames like this, then then really look for for uh, uh, you know touches of of your of your 15 EMA and exit on that, or, or perhaps even use a different one. But 15 minutes requires a fairly aggressive stop loss because your your slippages your slippage and spread. That's the difference between the buy and the ask is going to just by factor is going to be the same as it would be in a, in, a, in a 60 or a daily or whatever other chart weekly chart your entry is the same but because your trade is shorter time frame your trade is shorter in time and your profit is shorter in profit if that's making sense so hence you 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 there's a lot of argument to be said for the time frames get a more aggressive stop loss bring in a a, a five or maybe a ten so I should say the other way around, bring in a 10 or maybe a 5 and, and use that rather as your, your stop loss. Um, someone's then saying, so it was Heather, saying, what about just going and looking at completely different markets, 100%. Um, so let's try and focus on our time zone, because if we, move, if we leave our time zones, then things get nasty. Uh, let's ignore Greece. No, let's look at Greece. So, I mean, Greece is a market I've never looked at in my entire life. The Greece 25 as opposed to the Hungry 12. Oh, boring names. Switzerland blue chip. Yeah, boring names. Uh, I'm pretty sure we do not catch this beast. Uh, no, we don't because my 30 is above my 60s. So the Greece has a little bit of a collapse and we get nothing to do with it. I'm going to drop back to my preferred hourly time frame. Um, and we still don't catch that, but we do, I think, catch on the upside. So there, my 30 is above. Is Does we, my close? Yes. So there's your, your trigger. Remember, trigger confirmation. So your confirmation at that point is the second candle. Your entry is at 17.07. Um, and your exit is then at 17.30. So you've made all of 23 points. 23 points is not exciting, but this is out of a 1,700 point index. So as a percentage, it's chunky. The point is, is that as a trader, we trade points, right? I mean, that's what we're doing. We, we're not worrying about, oh, I made you know, a percent on the... No, no, no. We care about the points that we made. So there's a big argument to be saying is you actually want the indices that are higher values. So let's run our R down and see that the highest value one happens to be the Switzerland blue chip. And how cool to trade Switzerland. I'm sure they send you chocolate bars every time you make money. Oh, they should. They probably don't, but they certainly should. So you actually want nice high index values because, and let's take our top 40. So our top 40, a 1% move is 450 points, um, <coughs> which means your range on an average day is 450 points, which means there's lots of money to be made. And that's what trading is about, is finding that money. 30 above 60, so winning, we got the close above. There was be my entry, which was an 8102. And then my stop is at 8149, so 47 points. Thank you to the Swiss. Someone's saying, can we look at a daily? Absolutely, we can. Uh, but we don't have enough data. That's really weird. Huh. So look at this. My trend lines don't my, my moving averages. So, oh, uh, because it's it's dated contracts. Okay, I hear, I see the problem. Um, but there I can tell that I have a buy signal confirming. Close fifty four EMA. Ah, oh, I see. Yes, thirty is below sixty. Uh, so simply not enough data on this. We would have to go find the, uh, the the normal Swiss. But here's what I want to do. Let's go and find, I'm looking for South America, South America, South America. Where would South America be hiding? I want Brazil. There it is, Brazilian 60. 
Look at that, 59,000. So that's a, so, so look, there's time zone issues here, hey? but let's pretend that we don't sleep. But we're going to see nice point moves. And what are my values per point? Look what I did. I clicked on the right one. Um, contract size per point dealing. Value of one point is a pound 20. Okay. Hey, so the one point, the, the comment that's coming through, and it's 100% correct, is, well, dude, just trade more contracts. And sure, I mean, that's not an unfair uh, claim in the least. So here, a bit messy. Um, is my 30 above my 60? Indeed it is. So long stop. Long stop. And then finally, we get a real long uh, 60,070 points and stopped at uh 63150 so making 3000 odd points that trade ran for a fair bit uh that was 5 october and the exit was 1 november so it ran for a little over 3 weeks and those are the sort of trades that you can expect in this system where you'll make yourself 3000 points um five percent on the index and it will run for an age in a day and just prior to that you'd had you'd been getting killed um so there was a is that a green candle i can't see uh close six eight five close six two five ah so that wasn't a green candle so there you've got a confirmation and then a stop one failed uh confirmation stop two failed confirmation stop three failed by now you're starting to really think to yourself i hate it I don't like this. But all of these times you've been losing money. I mean, in that case there, you went long at 445 and you got stopped literally a day later um, at 150. So you lost 300. Uh, nasty, but, you know, not the end of the world. Um, here as well, you're going to take a small loss. You, well, no, whatever. You're long of 645 and you are short. So you, you're going to take those hits and then you're going to catch the run. And when you catch the run, it's going to be it's going to be massive and real, and you're going to make yourself the thousands of points, and it comes back to you. And that's the point with it, is that it's lots of because it's a trend based system. Lots of trades that don't really make for great money, and then do incredibly well, um, and 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 print you cash in a sense. Uh, if we drop it to weekly. <sighs> Again, not enough data, but let's make the assumption that we're above the 60. So there maybe was an entry back in February um, and an entry that we're still long of. So the end point would have been 49,600. Um, we used the 30 for our exit. So we're up 10,000 points uh, from February of this year. No, I lie, it's not February. For March of this year, we're up 10,000 points and still long that position, still long that position. Um, uh, I see what the question. So <clears throat> could you use uh, other triggers to exit you? You absolutely could. So you could use a reversing candle, which is there, which would have spat you out. Um, and then you've got a re-entry into the trade at that point there. There are other ways to, to look at your exit. I keep it quite simple. Um, yeah, so Gunter, that's the problem, is that you've made 10,000 points since March, very nice, but you've been paying interest the whole time, and that interest is is expensive, frankly. Um, your margin is not, but your interest is. That's why I go to vanilla ETF, um, and that's why I trade. And if you go to my the trading subs there, we go to vanilla ETF, and then we trade the, the ETF. So we're currently long... S&P 500, although the S&P is doing great, but the RAND is killing us. And we have triggers on mid-cap and FTSE that will confirm at the end of this week or not. Um, and if they and we just, we trade on the S&P, we're trading the new core shares S&P, we trade the DBXs for um, UK, Europe, uh, Japan, uh, and, and uh, yep, those three territories. And then locally we trade Indy, Resi, Finney using Satrix, and then mid-cap using the Ashburton. 
So it is a very simple system. I, I as I said, so I, I trade the sub indices and the offshore indices using local ETFs on the weekly chart, um, and and it, it's it's a painful experience. I mean, this year I don't think since I've been since we launched the beta back in May, I don't think. We've had we've had some trades which are maybe sort of break even trades at best, but we've certainly had nothing to write home about. Um, but you know th it's been that sort of a year in, in in terms of markets. If we go back, and I only bought the offshore stuff in a few months ago, so initially we were just looking at local, and local indices aren't doing very exciting stuff at all. So that is very much to be expected. Um, folks, if you've got questions, pop them in. That's what I was looking for. Italy. Not sure why Italy interests me. Probably because they're referendering. So, <clears throat> yeah, the, the question coming through is, is which is the best to trade? So, I, I, I mean, I don't know which is the best to trade because you know there, there's obviously a, a, an objectable answer to that where we can go and determine which index has made the most money over the last decade um, and then make the assumption that that will continue into the future, an assumption which may or may not be correct. Um, did we catch that short? No, we did not. Uh, we did, however, catch. So we got a short there, stopped another short there, uh, stopped another short, not confirmed, not confirmed, not confirmed. Um, uh, I'll talk about in a sec. Um, so, so there is quantifiably one. The, the, the issues to decide is is to to decide on time zones. Do you want to trade Central African time, or do you want to trade in the middle of the night? In which case, go trade Asia. If you want to trade sort of you know evenings, go trade America. Um, if you want to trade, you know, so sort of if you, if you want to trade from from you know four o'clock through to midnight, uh, trade the Americas. If you want to trade. Our sort of hours trade up into Europe. If you want to trade uh, sort of midnight through to, to, to sunrise, then go trade Asia and Australasia. Um, there are the indices that we are trading within this strategy here. Is that information all correct? Yes, it is. Um, sorry, a question came through from that, and now I've deleted who it was. But anyway, they're the, they're the indices that I trade within my lazy on a weekly. So, so you've got to pick your time frame and decide which is the time frame that you want to trade. And that's your very much first port of call. My advice as always is don't try and trade the the five o'clock to mid, you know, sun, what I call the sunset to midnight or the midnight to sunrise. Um, you know, we need a life, we need to sleep, we, we need a family and all of that sort of thing. Um, so probably trade into Europe. And then trade the FTSE because it's nice, it moves, it happens. There's stuff happening in the FTSE. If we go back to that, Uh, grab that one there. We'll take it to an hourly chart. Um, and maybe the issue with the FTSE is, is the points, in which case maybe you want to go and trade a, a, a mini. So that's my weekly on the FTSE, which is busy triggering. Uh, drop it back down to my hourly. Um, and looking like did that close above. So that is a close. And if at 2 o'clock... We close if the FTSE at two o'clock closes above six nine five eight point six, which is currently above. Uh, that candle will be green, and we will then get another buy signal coming through. We can, of course, go and trade the minis. So the, the FTSE is what is that index? That index is ten pounds a point. Uh, that is what one hundred and seventy bucks a point. That that's that's quite chunky and that quite possibly scares you um that's the equivalent of 17 aussies so a lot to be said for that to be scary so we say to ourselves well cool let's go find the mini uh stock indices uh footsie um we have two pound contracts which is a current strange rates 35 ish a point um do they have nasty minimums? Sometimes their mini contracts have minimums of two. Nope, minimum one size. So you trade the mini, two pounds a point, call that 35 rand a point. Uh, that's not so scary. Um, and, and, and that is, you know, that's a perfectly viable uh, solution to it. So London is broadly our time frames. So that works nicely. Um, waiting for chart to come up, uh, and we get in the same picture. You get exactly the same trades. So you, again, you're sitting here and you're waiting um, for the trade to go through. 
and for it to confirm. And what you know is that you've got 25 minutes. So you can go make what I like about this and why I liked the the, the 30 and the 60 is that you know that you've got 25 minutes before this candle does or doesn't confirm. And in fact, you've known for a while now, you've, you, you, know, you know that nothing's going on. Did you get a short trade there? I think you did. So, nope, 30 was not below 60. Uh, they only crossed at that point there. And then that long trade didn't come through. So, in fact, you haven't had any trades here for a while, not since that one there. So, you haven't had any trades, well, since the 9th, which was just last week. Um, yeah, so Heather's point is, is that you trade this with others, 100%. So, what I'm looking for, for, and I'm betwixt and between. I, I want to do more trading, but I want to do more lazy trading. Not exactly this system, but what I mean by lazy trading is not having to spend hours in front of a computer. Um, and I've, I've got my systems for the Aussie, and they're nice, and they're lacquer, and I trade the Aussie. Um, and I'm looking for something for London, and I might then look at this in a sense. Um, if you drop to 30 minutes, which is, as I said, the shortest time frame that I'm particularly keen on going into, and 30 is above 60, price did not confirm, price did not confirm, so again, we're sitting there. Yeah, so so, uh, so what we do is, is we say the 30 above the 60, you only go long. So at the moment, at this point, since here, there, the 30 crossed the 60. Um, so at this point, 30 is above 60. We're only looking for long trades. So we wait, we wait. We ignore those short trades there. And now we've got a candle that's looking like it will go through. First candle is trigger because that one did not close above. That will be a trigger. And then we go long on the next candle. Um, there probably there may have been a short back there. But the, the point what I'm trying to make here is that you can go, and it's lazy in the sense that you know that ah, there's nothing happening for the next hour, and off you can go. Let's go back to my preferred time frame here. So here we're getting some buy signals. Yep, uh, that's a buy. There's my confirm at 9.22. And I am stopped at 9.28. So I made all of six points. Um, there's a confirmation and there's a stop. Uh, let's run the points on it. Let's be fair here. 9.40 long, 9.36 stopped, six points. And then you get the one that works. You get the nine. So what are we? 9.45, we are long, and we get stopped at, so there we make 20, 18, 19 points on that trade there. Those ones never confirm. These ones don't confirm because my 30 is below my 60, indeed, at that point it turned. Yeah, so question there. So we got the entry there. Oh, that's a good point. Is that, ah, so that's actually a close of a weekend. Yep. So you probably. So I would. I would close. I mean, do you hold over the weekend? You can. It helped, but it would have got you a slightly better out. And then at uh, eleven o'clock on Sunday evening, there was a, a mad move, and your stop would have taken you out at two o'clock in the morning. Um, <clears throat> so how do you manage the stops with this? Is you can set alerts, nice and simple. You set yourself an alert, and in fact, what you can do. And here's something quite n a nice trick there. So take the, uh, the 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 bid as the case may be. Take a exponential moving average. Uh, make it 15 EMA period <clears throat> crosses market price. Boom. That will then send you an alert. Will it? Will the alert wake? Is another question in its entirety. But let's go to this. The trick here is my stop loss. So I want to put a stop loss in, um, and I can put a guaranteed stop, which is very, very nice. But my stop loss is a fixed price. I can't make my stop loss a condition. So I can't say my stop loss is if it goes through the 15, then exit me out. So those two o'clocks are really nasty. So the question you've got to ask yourself is, do you want to make this a day trading system? In other words, at some point, you close the position and go to bed. 
you don't leave it lurking overnight. If you are in a 15 or even a five minute chart, I would say absolutely um, at some point, close. it doesn't have to be at five o'clock. I hear that point. But, you know, if you can monitor it, if you're at home in the evening and you're having dinner and watching TV, then you can just set the alert and you can say, you know what, I, I, my phone's in my pocket, I'm awake, I can wait for the alert. Um, 30 minutes, an hour, uh, do you want to hold overnight? A call you've got to make, uh, you know, your, your, your take in its entirety. What I would certainly do, and let's go back to that trade that we could have potentially got here. So at this point here, so this is a nice entry. It's at 2 o'clock on a Friday on an hourly chart. Nice. Uh, everything's looking lovely. You're running. Um, you know, at some point here, 10 o'clock on Friday evening, I'm cashing out for, so what's my entry? 9.45. At this point here, I am cashing out for 30 plus points on the index, couple of hours, take the money. Absolutely take the money. You know, that, that's almost a thousand bucks um, per contract at around, you know, so what did we say? 35 rand a point, 30 points. It's about a about thousand rand for you, for you, for your efforts. I would close the position. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not going to hold it over the weekend. I'm not even most nights going to hold it overnight. Um, this position here coming up and it's a late in the day position. Um, you know, it's a case of, uh, okay, let's see how it goes. But if it triggers, take it. Don't, you know, it, it we don't have to close it at five o'clock. Um, so the flip is, do you close or not? If you're in 15 or 30, I think, you sorry, uh, 15 or shorter, you definitely do. 30 or 60 minutes, I, I think it's your call. Um, I haven't traded this system in, in short time frames for almost, a, in fact, a decade now. And when I was trading it in, in, in short time frames, I absolutely was. I would take the money and, 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 and run. If you're up to the four-hour charts with your, with your FX, don't stress it. Um, leave it, run it through the FX, let it run. Uh, don't you know, hold them overnight. I want to see what they've got other indices there. Oh, that's right. The volatility, dollar baskets, and yeah, the vol. So your 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 VIX and stuff like that. I'm gonna go back to uh, Euro USD. I want to go back to a random point in time. Folks, I've run out of time, but I'm gonna I'm booging on a bit. If you've got questions, drop them. But I'm gonna end shortly. So this, I'm just going back to a random point in July. Uh, so what have we got here? We've got the 30 years below the 60, so we're looking for short. So there is your short trade. There it is confirmed. There is your stop, even in the four hour. Um, then let's pull it across a bit more that way. Uh, confirmed and a nasty stop there. You nasty stop. Um, why is this being? Is it being so volatile? Yeah, it is. It's going from. No, it's not being too volatile. So when we say look at it, and oh, so I've, I, I've, I'm, I look at it. In fact, I look at these currencies in the weekly chart. You know me, lazy as all heck. So I've got thirties below. So that is my short trade, short at uh, 9197, stopped at 6664, so 9917, so about 330 points in that particular trade. Um, but that trade ran for an age, eh? so you ran from 9 November through to 2 December. Um, nothing wrong with that. In your weeklies, and I, I want to sh let's pull this back a little bit more. I mean, understand this chart is going back into 2014. Hey, um, I'm trying to. So there it is. There in your weeklies, you catch some massive moves, but then you sit in them for an ever. Did we catch this? This is the question. So 30 was below 60. Price closed below. There is my short. You would have gone short at 34. For, let's call it 34 on the nose because really we're talking roundings. Um, 34 on the nose and your stop is at 11. So you made 
uh, call it 12. So you made 22 cents there. Uh, if you want the more aggressive stop, so less aggressive stop, third, call it 14. That's easily more than 20 cents that you made on the euro. But that trade ran from July 14 through to May 15. You see my point. I mean, it ran forever and a day. I mean, that is a, that's almost a trade which ran for a year. And now what we get in this situation here is it gets really ugly because it just gets messy. So what do we get? We get a trade that confirms, spits us out. Uh, we get another confirmed short, stops us out. We get another, no, it doesn't confirm. We get a confirmed short, spits us out. Uh, and we would currently be short. So, yep, we would have gone short at that point. So it would be short the euro dollar um, at 1.05, so let's say 0 0.59, uh, rounding it. So you're currently short and you're 50 points underwater um, on the weekly chart. These trades will run forever in a day. Uh, short question coming through to, can we have a quick look at the FTSE on a weekly? I'm not sure. Uh, is it updating data? Ah, yes, we're into 2014. So I can tell you now that this is not a chart you would have made a vast amount of profit off. Um, maybe a short trade there. Did it Did it confirm? Is my 30 below my 60? Nope, so you didn't catch that short. You did catch that long, and then you got stopped, and then you caught the long. Oh, you're in a weekly chart, so be more gentle. It, you probably broke even on that trade. This one here, you didn't catch it, which is why I trade multiple indices. And let me quickly, and then we'll close off. I'll go show you the indices that I'm trading. So I use Ami Broker for my for my end of day and 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 weekly and stuff and data like that. He has Ami Broker. Um, I have a watch list with my lazies. Let's pull that across. Uh, and let's do that today. So we haven't had trades because I'm trading ETFs. I don't do the shorts, but there was a confirmed buy, which almost immediately stopped me out. Confirmed buy, uh, stopped me out. Confirmed buy, stopped me out. That pretty much has been this year on the Indy. The Resi haven't had a trade in years, literally in years, because why? Um, because my 30 is below my 60. Um, let's zoom out. So last time I took a trade here would have been June 14. I would have gone long. It confirmed at around 56,400, and I would have been stopped at around 56,400. So I went pretty much nowhere. That was my loss because now we've got short trades only, and I don't use shorts because of the ETFs. Finney, um, same sort of story. This is quite messy buy and then stopped um, trigger but not confirm so we get a lot of trigger but not confirm and then all of this not trading at all but you get some nice trades here I mean so here's your your so let's take this back a little further even uh, update me tonight let's find the the initial intro I'm going to show you what happens when you get an initial so there's an initial entry into the finney down there December 11. Uh, at around 8,300, give or take. And you got stopped there at around 10,900. So you made 2.3. You got back into the trade there at 11.5, and you got stopped at 11.3. So now you've made 2,000. I'm accumulating them. You got back in, you got stopped. You got back in, and then you got stopped, and you got back in. Then you got stopped and back in and stopped. But let me show you Indy. That entire trade, you were taking entries from September 2011, and you ultimately got stopped in October 2014. Three years and some months, 38 odd months. Your move is from around 26,000. Your stop is around 60,000. And you had re entries. You had a re entry here. You had a re entry here. Re entry. I will re enter as long as my stop is in the profit. 
Um, but anyway, that was not what we're looking at. We want to see where we're sitting right now. So my Finney, this is for yesterday's close. I got the data for Tuesday. There is my trigger, that big green candle there. I've gone through my 15, uh, my 30 is above my 60. If we close there on Thursday, because remember, Friday's a holiday, I will enter 9 o'clock Monday. Um, there is my Eurostox 50, but my 30 is below my 60, so it doesn't count. There is my US dollar, uh, US dollar, sorry, S&P 500. Um, I have been long since that candle. So we went long around 21.8. So we're about 90 points up. Unfortunately, the RAND has taken all the shine off, but nonetheless. Nikkei 225, I've got to clean this piece of data, but we're finally getting the 30 above the 60. So now what happens, a pullback on the price to blow the 50 in a rally higher, and then we're interested. And then there's your FTSE 100. Um, which has given us a trigger, and if it's still there on Friday and above, we will take it. Uh, so, any broker I use, investordata.coza. By 100 miles, the best uh, data provider. It's about two or two and a half grand a year. I've just paid my subs beginning or late, beginning of late November. Um, so, it's not cheap. Well, no, I mean, it's 200 bucks a month. No data is cheap, but it's just the best data. It is clean. So, this data that I'm pulling in here for FTSE, Nikkei 225 and stuff, I'm actually pulling in from Yahoo. I use a AmiQuote. Ah, wrong button. Um, so I use AmiQuote, which is a part of Ami Broker. I downloaded it. They told me I had to pay, and they've never asked. So I haven't. And then I've just set up, and I call in from Yahoo. So I get my I get Yahoo and that pulls me in from Yahoo. So the offshore data is free. It's just the South African data I'm paying for. Ladies and gents, I'm going to leave it there because we're almost pump, bumping up against an hour. Let's quickly go back to that FTSE, see if it's going to confirm on our hourly chart. Dum 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 dum. So at this point, not looking so great. It is a red candle. I need it to be a green candle. We'll see how it goes. There's still another seven minutes to go. It's moot at this point, not trading it. But anyway, we'll have a look-see. Uh, ladies and gents, <clears throat> Gunter, everyone else, uh, thank you. This is my last gig bar media. I've got some media tomorrow evening. I'll be on uh, Business Day TV at 7.30 with Julieta doing Stockwatch on Thursday and on Classic FM at 6.30. Um, not sure what I'm doing, but something. Uh, and that's it. 2016 is over. Man, it's been a year and 17 sevenths. Um, but we'll be back next year. Uh, second week of Jane. Everyone, have great holidays. Travel safe. If you're not on holiday because you're working, thank you. Someone has to work during this holiday period. We really do appreciate it. Uh, everyone, all the best. Cheers. Hope. <music>